Hello, hello, everybody. It's Saturday. Hello, everybody. It's Saturday. Welcome back to another day in the life of Entrepreneur Life, where we air every Saturday, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we bring you great guests. So we first like to, of course, thank all of our followers on all of your favorite, favorite podcasts, wherever you're listening from. And um, I guess, I mean, thanks for always following us and, and keeping up with us and enjoying our show and enjoying our guests. We really appreciate you and for everybody who's tuning in live right now. So I am one of your hosts. I'm Rose from McDonald Bookkeeping Services, and I'm here with my co-host, Hi, everyone. It's Shamar here with SWHR Consulting. I am sorry. I'm trying to figure out why there's bad lightning. Is that, can you see? <laughs> Just like. So today, as everybody <laughs> can see, today. we have a really good guest on the show. I think he's going to be a great guest. Oh, stop. It's, you look fine, Shamara. You look fine. <laughs> okay, good. I'm just like, okay, good. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about our guest today. Of course, they can kind of see him on the on the tickler on the bottom, but I think he's going to be a great guest for everybody who is a consumer. So go ahead. Hi, Simone. everyone. Again, so we, as she said, we have, we have we have a great guest today. His name is Tom Wise. Yes. He has years, guys, 30 years, a host and director of On Air Talent. Um, a live TV sales business. He was actually, um, he appeared on uh, QVC. So I'm excited to hear all about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Honestly, I just want to get him on the show and he can tell us all about his um, history and, uh, you know, uh, his background and everything like that. Yeah. And also yeah. he was on Keep a Production for um, Kevin Harrington. So I'm excited to hear about Shark Tank as well. I'm so excited let's get him on the show. Everything because if you are a consumer, you should be tuning in. So you guys better listen to that replay for everybody who wants who's got products to sell. Okay, so anyway, let's get him on the screen because that means I need to create some so I can get on HSN or something like that. So let's get him on the screen here. Hey, hey me hi. too. <laughs> Hello, Rose. Hello, Shamara. How are you, ladies, today? We're good. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I really am looking forward to this. Thank you for coming on the show and accepting so our invitation. <laughs> sure, my pleasure. So if you could tell our guests a bit about, you know, actually how you got started. Why? I mean, we're going to get to, I want to show people the product you have because actually I've seen it before, but, but how did you get started? How did you know this is what you wanted to do? It was crazy. Since we have a little bit of time, I'll give you what I think is an interesting story. I, I took a, a radio class when I was living in Chicago. I was born in Chicago. And I took a radio class, and I always wanted to be on the radio. I always liked the, the idea of being a talk show host or something, right? So fast forward, I'm living in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, and I'm working selling office equipment with my sister. And I did that for about three years. And in the meantime, I learned how to type because I'm selling typewriters. This is even before word processors were selling, right? I get a job wow. with the uh, Craftmatic adjustable beds. I get <laughs> fired. I get fired two days before Christmas. A little. It, this is kind of an accounting thing. I told him when the check was in. The check wasn't in. And anyway, so um, the guy had to fire me. So I get. I go to Home Shopping and I apply for a job as an operator to take orders because I could. You know, I was used to eating on a regular basis, and I knew I could type a little bit. So I passed the <laughs> typing. I passed the typing test. And uh, as I'm walking out, so my little radio broadcasting mind kicked in, and I tell the guy, I said, you know, I think I could be a host here at, the, at Home Shopping. This is 1987. And he hooks me up with an audition. I go with my, I wear my only suit. I'm 27 years old. I'm a kid. I go to the uh, remote location. They've got one engineer. The studio is empty. They hand me three products. They hand me a hair straightener, a pest repeller, and a cappuccino maker. I know I know nothing about any one of those products. I don't drink coffee, never straighten my hair, never had a bug with thing in Chicago. <laughs> anyway, I was horrible. I auditioned and I was horrible. I couldn't get anything right. I'm mumbling, I'm stumbling, I'm bumbling. I, I last about five minutes. I tell the guy, well, I, I'm done. 
And he goes, uh, all right, we'll see you around. I go, not after that. That was a train wreck. That was a mess. And so I go, I go home and uh, I get a call a couple of days later and they say, hey, we want you to come back in an audition again. I go, what? So I watch a little bit more of the show and I get, you know, a bit more of the rapport. Go back in, they hand me three products. These products, I do not remember what they were, but I do about 15 minutes, you know, American Express, Visa, American, you know, 30 day guarantee, blah, blah, toll free numbers, a pitch of the product. And then I go home, get a call a couple of days later and they want to, they want me to come in and they talk about making an offer. So I take a tour of the studios. I'm scared. It's 250 live operators, live TV. I was like, what have I done? I'm in way over my head on this. But I said, let's, let's just go forward and see what happens. So I get in the office with the then vice president of the company. He offers me $18,000 to start, 1987. I jump in it. The wow. most I made up to that point was 15000 And uh and even though I was a nervous kid, I turned around and I, I asked him a question. I said, may I ask you a question, Mr. Brutcher? I go, he goes, sure, what do you got? I said, is it common that you'll uh, have somebody audition twice? He goes, oh, no, no. That guy never turned your microphone on the first time. We had no idea what you were saying. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's crazy. So that I worked for them for 10 years as a host. And I worked for them as a, the director of honor talent for a couple of years. And that's where I met my, uh, I met my wife there as well, Terry Toner. She still works as a guest at, H, at, at HSN. How does a person know? I wouldn't say a person. How, how do you know for people who sell consumer products? Yes. You know, how, how do you know or how would they know what, what is good enough or marketable enough to, to sell, to, to, to be on HSN or QVC? I mean, how do you determine that? It's a good, that's a, that's a good question because you don't want to waste your time. Now, yeah. you look at the demographic and you look at the people that are, are, are watching HSN and QVC. If you, mm -hmm. had a bell, if you had a bell curve, the top of that bell curve would be a, a 50 year old woman, maybe 52 years old, but that's the woman, that's the person that's, that's the key most people are in that demographic. So mm -hmm. if you can solve a problem, I always said this, if you can solve a problem for that person, then you can, you know, be on that show. Uh, most of the products I would sell would be either an automotive product or a, or a product for your house. And that's mm -hmm. what I've been, that's what I've, I became a vendor over the years after I was hosting for 10 years. I worked with Kevin Harrington, the Shark Tank guy for about three years. We were producing infomercials and then I became a vendor for, uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> then I became a vendor for uh, <laughs> HSN. And this is my latest invention, the carry card. But but if you can solve a problem, this is a perfect household item. Everybody at some point needs to move something. You're moving a couch, moving some uh, refrigerator. You're uh, you know going in and out of an apartment. You live in the you live in the country. You live in the downtown. This replaces a wheelbarrow, a, a hand truck, a dolly, and even turns into a four step step leg. Thanks for showing that. But but to solve a problem, I used to sell pop up hangers. I used to sell. Uh, snap over uh, wide angle mirrors. I used to mm -hmm. sell uh, lights that go on if the power goes off. So just about something that anybody could use. Anybody watching the show could use it. So how does a person actually, how would, so, okay, how do they actually get their product or market their product just to even get on QVC to know if it's something that they're even interested in for any well, of these online marketing, you know, these shows? Well, if I was going in the business today, I would see if I could, I would take, I would find whatever that item would be as inexpensively, whether it's an invention or it's something that I found that I could private label. Like the, the lights that I found, I found them in China and they were, they were out there, they were built, but I just put my, I put my label on it. I call it the what a light. Now this carry cart, there was something invented like that many, many, many years ago. I just improved it, got a patent for it, and then I trademarked the name. All these things can be done relatively inexpensively. Sort of the trademark. The trademark's $150. It's not cheap, but it oh. can, can be done. The patent was a bit more expensive. The trademark mm -hmm. usually takes about six months to, to clear. But if I was going to find, let's say I found something. Mm -hmm. we, in, the, in the business, we call it a widget as a general name for some item you've got. So if, if I found something that I that isn't commonly found at Walmart, wasn't commonly found somewhere else, then I would test it on a, with a Facebook ad, $5 Facebook ad, see what happens. I would uh, test it by selling it on Amazon. And if I found that it was selling well, you know, 
10 pieces a day, 15 pieces a day. It all depends upon how much advertising you're doing. Then at that point, I might find representation. You can, you can approach QVC or HSN via the internet, but it's probably very low percentage that they're going to invite you to come into the studios and come into the uh, facility to, to pitch your item. You're much better off using a rep that mm -hmm. is familiar with the buyers. They're going to get five to 7% of a, of a commission, but they've got a phone call. They've been dealing with those folks for you know 15 years and the buyer's going to answer the phone and the buyer's going to have a conversation. And if they're interested in the product and you say you've got this little track record where you've sold it on Facebook, you sold it on Amazon, you've got a good chance of, of selling on HSN or QVC because they like products. I mean, new products is the lifeblood. You're doing them a favor by bringing them something new that their customers want. You're, you're helping them. Is so there a go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so I know that you mentioned, um, you know, how to kind of get on there, but typically do you, uh, when you do have an invention, do you try to go in front of like a focus group first and have them test it out before you kind of market it on Facebook and things like that? Is there something like an initial step before you take that plunge to see if it, people would be interested? You could do that. But if I found something, I mean, it's so, so inexpensive to make a video these days of just demonstrating an item and, mm -hmm. and literally a $5, $10 ad on Facebook to just test to see what kind of response. I try to keep, I try to keep, there's two things I try to do. I try to keep my uh, cost of entry small. So if I, so if it doesn't work, then I'm out, you know, it's just a small amount of money. And right. then I also, I also look for items that were popular maybe 10 or 15 years ago. We call that in the business old gold, something mm -hmm. like, uh, like, uh, I remember my uh, wife used to use these pads on her <laughs> shoes because the high heel shoes would shape her, shape her skin, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I was able to locate pads, mm -hmm. silicone pads like that in China. It's not a common item. People probably walk by that thing a thousand times a day at, you know, at, at the store. But if you're, at, if you're at HSN, it's a TV show that's going to focus on that particular item for you know, 8 to 12 minutes. So, you know, so if you find something that's not commonly out there, it's something you could sell on Amazon, Facebook, or certainly HSN. So, but yeah, I, I don't know that I would spend a lot of money in focus groups. I would, I prefer to test that on Amazon. I mean, there's the customer going to tell you right there and then whether you've got an item or not. That's kind of an inexpensive focus group, in my opinion. Is there a requirement to have okay. a product um, patent, you know, trademark before you can even approach them? No, absolutely not. However, the trademark does allow you to go in a special category when you're on Amazon. And that's important. Oh. Like I said, you know, it's, it's, it's a long process, four to six months to get the trademark. But once you get that, Amazon's going to protect your product. Let's say I go on Amazon and I name something, uh, you know, Tom's, Tom's widget. And someone else could come in and I, I'm spending a lot of money advertising Tom's widget. Somebody else could come in and use Tom's widget as a search item to sell their item. So somebody comes on Amazon, types in Tom's widget, it's gonna direct, redirect the traffic to his website mm -hmm. rather than go to my website. But if I've got the trademark, then they're not allowed to use my trademark as a way to drive traffic to their website. So it's an in inexpensive protection. And, and it also starts, you're starting to build a brand, you know, it could be Tom's widget. Cause I did, I did uh, Total Visor, Total Hanger, Total Mirror. So I did a whole total thing and I did a, I did what a what a ladder, what a what a light. So I was doing mm -hmm. like you know, so you kind of keep keep a theme going for your products. I, I also like to check to make sure that the website is available. I, I advise you to create a name like what a light. No one's ever heard of what a light. So now that name's going to be available on the website. Now I can go ahead and get a trademark. Not worried that a lot of people have that name. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have carry card. It's kind of named funny. I mean, I couldn't just get C-A-R-R-Y, C-A-R-T, right. that, that website was long gone. So right. now I've created Carrie Cart, and then I said, well, Carrie's kind of an interesting name. It's kind of a man's name or a woman's name. And Carrie is also kind of an Irish name, and it does four things and four leaf clover, and you got four items, four, four different ways that the cart does. So I incorporated the name, the clover, the cart, yeah, you know, so it was something, something to hang my hat up. Is there a minimum quantity that like if you were to get to the point of being able to present your product on either platform, you know, whether it be HSN, QVC or any of those other types of 
you know, um, you know, I guess you would say they're consumer shows. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's a good. Or question. Amazon. That's a good question. Amazon, there's no minimum. You could have four of something in your house and ship it out of your basement or whatever, and that, that's fine. Huh. So they don't care. So that's why I would test on Amazon. Same thing for Facebook. Nobody cares. As long as you can fulfill it, that's what they're going to care about. And then as far as quantity, there's the rub. That's why you want to test on Facebook or Amazon or eBay, because when you go to QVC or HSN, they're going to ask you to bring in a minimum of $30,000 or $50,000 of the product. So oh, that's wow. where it gets a little bit wow. expensive. I mean, I just recently got a, an order for 2,200 pieces of the carry cart at, you know, somewhere. Oh, my know. gosh. Yeah. So, so that's, that becomes a little bit of, you know, that becomes a little bit of cash. The, you know, I got to scramble together and get into a pile <laughs> in order to make that purchase order. But I know that the item sells. And so I'm comfortable with making that type of investment. But I wouldn't do it out of the box without testing. I have I, I have a very good relationship. I've been with HSN for 30 years on and off as a vendor, as a host, as a guest. So uh, I was able to come in on a very small purchase order and test it. But I was pretty confident I was going to get a fair shake. And, you know, I, I knew the item. The, it was old gold. The, the item did very well. So they sold four million pieces about 20 years ago on an infomercial. So I was pretty confident that this was a good good product to be involved with. So you see. Has there ever been any kind of conflict with, uh, for example, a product that you saw that was already made and then kind of taking taking it under your wing and kind of spinning it a little bit to be under yours when it uh, was already in existence? Have you ever had any conflict there? Well, it's, a, it's an interesting question. About 10 years ago, I started this. I started as a vendor actually about 15 years ago with an item called, uh, I called it the Total Visor. And it was a, it's a, Kind of imagine, have you ever heard of blue blocker sunglasses? Yes. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And so they've got those amber lenses on the sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they, blue blocker, back in the 80s, in the late 80s, they made that, they took that lens and they made kind of a, a you know, a rectangular lens that you would put mm -hmm. in your car and you would attach it to the sun visor. And when the sun was blinding you, you'd flip it down. And now you'd see, you know, you can see like you're looking through a sunglass. So I, remember that when i was hosting in 87 that blue blocker had invented that piece so i sourced it in china back in the early 2005 2005 and i brought it back in you might need you might see that same lens being offered today they're using it they're calling it like remember those tech glasses tec tech glasses that you could you know see through the see at night and see through you know no, yeah. stop your vision so now that's, that, that's, that's come all the way around. Now they're using it. Somebody else is taking that same idea because it's not patented, but you could trademark a particular name and the demonstrations. I mean, I was doing that same demonstration with the yellow lot, yellow lens for uh, night vision and the amber for day. And so they, you know, and then, then I, 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 I brought the one light to market about 10 years ago. And, and about three years ago, I was knocked off by, uh, MSAN or one of those SC TV products, and they went ahead and they copied the whole pitch. I mean, shot for shot, they just knocked me off. But in the meantime, you know, I sold a hundred thousand of them. So I could have sold more. I was not. I, you know, things happen. I'm not. I'm not unhappy. It was good. It was a good one. You know what? I don't know about the the. I don't know what you call them. I don't know if you call them hosts. I don't know if you call them models. But every time I watch any of those shows, I don't, they have people that, I don't know if they have to research and, and practice the product. You know, the people who sell the product, what do you call those people on there? Well, you got two people. You got two people. You've got the host of the show, which is an employee. They're an employee of HSN or QVC. So they're going to be there for the entire one, two, or three hours. Mm -hmm. So they're going to, you know, you know, they're going to be the moderator of the show. Right. And then they'll bring on, they'll shuffle in guests. And the guests usually stay for anywhere from eight to 22 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. if it's a celebrity, they may stay for three hours, depending upon how many products they've got. Like Tony right. Little, Tony Little's a friend of mine. Tony might have a three hour block or a two hour block, you know, it may do two hours, six times on a Saturday or, you know, Saturday mm -hmm. and Sunday. So yeah, we're, we're called, now we're called guests versus the host of the show. So then you have, they have to study all of those products because when I watch them, it's, I'm like, there's a lot of products. Well, now I tell you, as a, the hosting now versus when I hosted was different. Used to be, um, 
when I hosted you, we, I didn't have any guests. I was talking for three hours straight without any guests. But we took a lot of phone calls. We used to take nine, 12 phone yeah. calls an hour. Now, and then we'd have a little description pop up on a computer screen that, you know, but if we just sat behind a desk. We weren't up and we're about. We just sat behind a desk like a newscaster. We'd read right. a little description and we'd, you know, take a couple of phone calls and then sell it in the meantime. Now hosts have, they familiarize themselves with the product during their off hours. But if you're, a, if you're an old pro, a lot of these items you've seen before, they rotate, there's a variation coming in. And they also all have little blue cards that they'll read as they bring in the guests. And so they'll actually have a description of the product. And then they probably met with the guests before the show. And the guy's gonna talk about what hot points are and what the demonstration is gonna look like. But he's got information, the guest has got information. So they don't have to be experts on it. They just have to know how to guide and get the, the pitch over to the guest. Okay. You probably don't wanna say what this is, but I'm gonna ask. I'll, I'll, I, will, Rose, I will answer any question. <laughs> is there something on there where someone's got a product and you're just like, are you kidding me? They really want to sell this to promote this. <laughs> you know what? I mean, there was a time when some, there was a time when somebody got sick and they look around at who's in the building. I ended up doing a three hour ladies fashion show and I know nothing about fashion. So it was like the ladies were putting up with this nonsense, but they weren't going to take it on a regular basis. We don't want this this guy, you know, just saying, oh, this is figure flattering, you know, because I picked that up from other shows. <laughs> but what about, like, what about those products that you just like, you know, how did it even make it on the show? It's just that sometimes that bad. And so I'm I, like, with the <laughs> with the marketing that you mentioned and, you know, in terms of getting people that are interested, I just... Sometimes I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> well, they try. These days, it's a lot harder to get something on that's just absolutely bad because it goes through so many processes. It, it right. It's so much of an investment. But back in the old days, yeah. you get some pretty, you get some pretty crazy stuff. One of my, one of my uh, favorite stories is uh, a friend of mine, Larry Muzzy, was the host of the show. Very popular host. Very funny. And uh, you know, he, he would, you know, get people just coming to watch to see what he's going to do next. So he's taking a phone call and he can barely hear the caller that he's talking to. She sounds horrible. And Larry goes, uh, Marge, uh, what's going on? You sound like you got your head in a bucket. And she goes, Larry, this is the phone you told me to buy last week. I finally they got, they finally delivered it. So yeah, it was a phone that Larry told her to buy. And it was horrible. <laughs> I love it. And then there was, there's one, I, uh, most of these people are dead now, but I'll tell the story. <laughs> Way back in the old days, you know, if you'd kick back enough money, if you'd kick back enough money, you'd get your item on the, you know, you'd get your item on the show. Just like back in the radio, back in the records days, if you delivered a new record in 1962 yeah. with the, you know, with some drugs, the guy's going to stick it on the <laughs> stick it on the radio. Anyway, uh, these diamond bracelets were of, of very, very bad quality. And I was at a huge meeting with the vendors, a huge meeting with, with, the, uh, with the buyers. And the, uh, the buyer said they wanted to return the diamonds to the, to the vendor. And the vendor told the buyer, he goes, what are you talking about? We've already paid a very high ranking official in the company, the kickback money that this, these diamonds are on a one way street. They were never gonna come back. So it was a funny story. He named somebody who was very, very high up in the, in the business. And everybody was like, that guy's taking kickbacks. That guy's a millionaire many, 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 many times over. But he was still interested in getting kickbacks. So, so the diamond bracelets would have come back. So who guarantees the products? Like, you know, what if I went in there with an eye cream? And yes, I mean, on. I just, because I've seen Shark Tank. Uh, you know, we don't really all know what happens behind the scenes, but I can say, oh, it does all this stuff. Right. Because we buy stuff on social media all the time. They get it home, be like, this is bull. And so. This is not what I ordered. <laughs> yeah. So. So what happens when you're when you get your product on there and so I get my product. How does that affect 
like Amazon or QVC or because are they guaranteeing the product? Oh, absolutely. All those, all those companies, all those platforms will readily return anything in 30 days and maybe a lot more. Their, their, their relationship with the customer is primary and their relationship with the vendor is secondary. So if you, I've, I've had crazy people uh, to want to return things. I used to sell, I sold for a time way back when, uh, uh, not, not iPhones, but iPods. Remember iPods 25 yes, years yes. ago, 20 years ago? I, was, I got cooked up on a deal where I was selling iPods for a friend. I became the vendor of record. People would return old ones. People would, would return empty boxes. HSN doesn't care. They're taking it all back. And the so vendor has to eat it all. What would you say the difference is of trying to get a product on Shark Tank versus on HSN or QVC? Mm. Well, that was, Shark that was my question. So, yeah. I'm Shark, excited Tank, to hear. Shark, Shark Tank is a little bit harder because Shark Tank, part of their deal is entertainment. You know, they're going to want to get some, they might get some crazy guy just because he's nuts and get him on show because he's entertainment. And they may even look for products that they're going to reject because you spent your life savings on this, you know? And so, because, and, and, and so, so somebody might have legitimate products and, but it's not entertaining. Well, you're boring and you're whatever you're, we've got 22 of you guys already. And, but we want somebody nuts. Instead, so you may or may not get on Shark Tank for a lot of reasons whether the product was good or not. I mean, I try to get on Shark Tank myself, and they said no. I mean, I got to the second level. I talked to the producer. I sent it, submitted a, a tape. I mean, the carry cart, I think, is a product would be viable, would be fun. I mean, I do a little stand-up comedy. I've been in the business for a long time. I think I might be an interesting person to have on Shark Tank, but they said no for whatever reason. So they never tell you the reason. They, they just say no. That's fine. But but QVC and HSN, they want to make money. They want to be successful, so they don't. So it's like whoever's the best, you're gonna, you know, get yourself to the top. I like I was on the other day on uh, on HSN selling a. I'm looking for a sample. I don't have it here. It's a cup call. It's a cup that you put inside your, you know, you know, inside your uh, car, and this holds your cell phone. I mean, you've seen something like this, mm -hmm. but they they priced it very low. They priced it for under twenty bucks. And uh, we sold out 1,800 pieces in two shows. And they were on the phone that afternoon getting more. And then I'm back on the air this Monday night at 11 o'clock to sell more of them. So if something's selling, they don't care who it is, where you're from, let's just get them on the show and start selling more stuff. Is there any type of product that will not be considered? Well... I mean, I mean, they'll they'll pretty much try anything. They've even sold, you know, spirits, wine, and things like that. I remember when I was when I was a young man, I was uh, I was the director of on air talent. No, no, I was the network sales manager before I was the director, and they were selling lingerie in a closed studio, and I'm 29 years old, and the guy, the vice president of the company, put me in charge of making sure. Everything was in place before they go out on TV. <laughs> I said, I, I said, I can't do that. So I had, I, I asked a, a, a woman that worked for me. I said, Mary, will you check everybody? I can't be eyeballing the models as they go on. So they, <laughs> so I'm going to be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so they, they sold lingerie. I think they even sold at some point. They even with Rhonda Shear sold sex toys at three o'clock in the morning, but. Oh my god! You know, oh, that's another question. Cause yes. why is it that it's always really like late at night or something? <laughs> why is that typically the time frame that they sell products? Like, oh, who was yeah. up that time? Oh, you know, you'd be surprised. I used to work hosting. <laughs> I used to host it from night from uh, three a.m. until six a.m. back in the you know late nineties. And we do a hundred thousand dollars of the business in those three hours. Wow! Pe people are, and then people people are shopping in infomercials because the infomercial time is a lot is very cheap that time. You know, you can get very oh. cheap half an hour in for you can get a you can get a half an hour on your local TV station for fifty bucks probably from two two a.m. to two thirty. 
but you wow. can't get it like that for you know, then you're going to spend five thousand dollars for that hour on you know saturday morning so it's all it all depends it's all you know so is the it can the okay so if i were to do, i'm trying to put this the best way so if i were to get a product on hsn or qvc is it a requirement that i would have to be on the show or can you just be like no just have one of you guys it's 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 best if you're doing an item you're passionate about and you've got the skill set to do it it's best but sometimes let's say you live in uh los angeles well the studios were in tampa it takes you a day to get down here it takes you a day or two to do the shows and it takes you a day to get back so you may be away from your business from three to four days for a 15 minute show so hmm. versus hiring some local talent for four to eight hundred dollars to go out and do that show there's no hotels there's no rental cars there's no meals yeah. there's no air flights so you you've got to do the math at some point is it right. cost effective that a local person drive down 18 minutes do the show and go home and pay them a few bucks so i mean i i am I'm, I'm local talent i do products like i just did the other day for telebrands or or whatever uh you know whatever would suit my, the category that i'm allowed to sell in and usually it's automotive housewares things like that so being that there's a minimum a minimum at least like you were talking about except with the exception of amazon what happens to all the items that don't get sold do they just take them home and try to sell them or it, it, is there like a recurring where they can they keep them you know um, well, you know i'm not sure no no i understand what you're saying if you if you sell hsn or a qbc a thousand like if i these 2200 pieces that i'm bringing into qbc if they don't sell and qbc decides not to air it again they're going to make a phone call to me and say where do you want us to ship these because ah. we're doing one Oh yeah, that'd be it'd be very painful to have to take those back. That's for sure. So, um, but but my relationship with HSN is much better. My once I they, they bring in an order for four thousand pieces or whatever, it's they're gonna they own them. They own those pieces. So they're gonna yeah. work. They're gonna work through them. So so but, but when you're initially involved with the QVC or HSN, they're gonna make the terms very very much in their favor, and they're not gonna give you any you know favored nations. I've been I've been a vendor for HSN for fifteen years. Oh. So tell us a little bit about As Seen on TV. How does that one work compared to HSN and QVC? All right. Well, As Seen on TV is a, is a oddly enough, here's a little insight. Don't tell anybody this, all right? So if you... <laughs> <laughs> any, Why is As Seen on TV when I'm in the Walmart line? There we go. I know. Well, here's the, here's, the, here's the secret. Nobody knows this. So this is between you and me, ladies. Okay. Anybody can use the SC9 TV logo. It's not registered as a trademark for anyone. What? It's don't tell anybody. So if you come up with an item, you can we got a lot of Um, what's, what's that, Rose? We got a lot of listeners, Tom. Uh, Rose, this is me and me and Shamara talking. If you get if you get an item, you can put SC9 TV on it. And now it may be a lie that's never be on TV. Put it on, you know, if it's on, maybe it's on your Facebook. That's kind of a TV. <laughs> but but the truth, I love it. But the truth is, it's not a registered trademark. Nobody owns that logo. Anybody can call it as seen on TV. Now, usually, as seen on TV is somebody like the, the major brands, you know, like Telebrands or yeah. uh, TriStar, where they've actually done 30 second commercials or two minute spots. And those are the items that they're selling on. And you can buy them, you know, call now, buy today. Hey, free shipping. We're going to double your order. So we've got that type of, you know, advertising movement on it. And, and they, those folks learned late. They learned in the late 1900s, like 1995, they decided, because it used to be, I know you ladies are probably too young for this, but it used to be when Ron Popeil would sell the pocket fishermen or the, you know, whatever he was selling, the spray can and hair in a can, Ron Popeil, one of the founding fathers of ASC on TV uh, stuff, he, he part of his pitch was, you can't find this in stores, all right? But the reality yeah. is, is you've generated interest. People want to go. They don't want to mail order. They want to go to the store and get it. So now they decided that we're no longer going to do can't find this in stores. We're going to advertise it, and then we're going to drive people to Walmart, drive people to CVS, 
you know, and so they can see that all that whole little section of as seen on TV, it's been a tremendous, tremendous, you know, a cash cow for the folks that create those types of products. I mean, they used to just get paid what people would send in, a, you know, sit right mail in a check. <laughs> now people can walk down to the store and get it. So it makes life a lot easier and a lot more profitable for everybody involved. If a consumer gets a product on any of these platforms, is there any, um, I say, regulation to where, because whether it be HSN, QVC, wherever, they can't market it any place while they're in that platform. They just have to allow the show so the show can make their percentage, their markup, their sale. You know, like they maybe can't have it advertised on their website or someplace else. It can only be on a certain period of time on HSN or only be sold on Amazon. Okay, no. there, there, are no, there are no rules to that, no rules. So as long as you're not violating some federal rule, which I can't really see you're doing, but each platform, that's a very good question, Rose. It really is an excellent question. But <laughs> each, each platform tries to make the, the product a little bit different than the other platforms. Like the mm -hmm. SCN TV, buy one cup call, get the second one free, all right? Or, uh, HSN, someone's going to create a cosmetic line where we're going to add in a bonus eyeliner or something. So they're going to make the offer just a little bit different. So, so we're not going to sell two for one like they're doing on TV, mm -hmm. on, on the SNN TV ads. We're going to just sell one for $19.95, you know, on HSN or on QVC. So the, the oh. offer is going to be a little bit different. The offer on TV is going to be one thing. And then the offer, I'm going to say TV being like commercial TV, like CBS, NBC, you know, mm -hmm. Lifetime versus HSN QVC. So they're gonna to try to wanna, to, you know, make the offer a little bit different so they don't kill their sales at the retail or kill their sales, you know, that they're advertising for the Walmarts and CVSs, but they wanna make something unique and special for the people that are watching HSN or QVC right at that moment to try to encourage them to dial right at that time. And Amazon and Amazon and eBay, they've got nothing to say. Amazon, everybody wants to be the best price. And Amazon will penalize you if they're not the if you're not the best price by taking away a buy button. I don't really? Know wow. Well, yeah. The, if you if you if you put your product on Amazon and you're not the best item, you become one of many. Like, click here to find out where you can buy this item, versus hmm. click here to put this item in your cart right now if you're oh. the best price. So it's oh, it's, really? it's a couple of things you want to learn if you're putting on Amazon that you want to be the best price. And Amazon, of course, loves when people are competing to, for the best price because that's just going to increase volume and your profits go down while you're fighting with your neighbor, you know, to get the best <laughs> price on something. But they don't care. They don't. They just want to sell widgets. And uh, but so between watching your pricing and making, you know, spend a cup, you can do the trademark yourself. Go to you know U.S trademark.com and they're going to walk you through the whole process. It's not complicated. And I think it costs about 150 bucks. I would, would recommend that if you've got an item that you think is really going to sell, get the trademark. Before you go now, to I hear when you trademark, trademark something, it's really best that there's this further process is if you can kind of explain how that process is, and, you know, um, like having people monitor it all the time to make sure it's not being manipulated or used. Yeah. Well, you're going to get protection. If you, you'll have to find somebody who's violating your trademark. I mean, nobody's out there looking to see if the carry card is being violated. I would have to find, I would have to put, employ people to look for people. And, and right now the card is selling fine, but it's not selling so well that people are going to try to, oh my gosh, let's call ours the carry card. Yeah, it's kind of a unique item. But if you, you're, you're obligated to protect yourself if, uh, if you know, your trademark's being violated. So what about the rumba? Because that was a super popular item when it came out. So tell us a little bit about that. That was the first item I ever sold as a guest on HSN. And that's got to be 15, 16 years ago, something like that. And that was the first time that the Roomba was ever sold on TV outside of an infomercial that really didn't do very well. They had an infomercial that they produced and it really didn't do very well. So their only way to market this item in the entire country was on HSN back in 2004. So me and, me and this other guy, we created props and demonstrations. We kind of looked at their infomercial. We stole what we thought was a good idea. Then we added a couple of different things. Yeah, but uh, we sold the Roomba 
back then and, and through that success, they were able to then evolve the product mm-hmm. and through that success were then able to, you know, bring the, bring the product to, uh, um, you know, Target and Walmart, and, you know, they, that got them to some retail because they were selling so well on HSN. I remember they flew me up to Boston where they do all the robotic testing and, uh, we were going to do a today's special on HSM, you know, very early, you know, like 18 months into the process. And the guy pulls me over, like the president of the company goes, I'm going to just tell you, if this, it's, if this today's special doesn't work, we're going to go out of business. So no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so in regards to like getting, you know, uh, in like Walmarts and the Targets and things like that, is it typical that once they see you on um, HSN or QVC that you probably get a good chance of being in, in those stores or is it kind of... It doesn't hurt, that's for sure. If you've got a track okay. record, it doesn't hurt. I have a hard time getting into uh, into uh, like hardware stores because my yeah. item, when you look when you look at it, it's like, what is it again? If it's just sitting on a on a rack, is it, it looks a like ladder? a locker? Actually, I thought you yeah. were. Still- <laughs> it's crazy. So that's pre- I really need to make an in- a full size infomercial to to uh, <laughs> yeah, what, what, what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so that that hurts me a little bit that people look at it and go, "What's going on?" But it, those four things make. Hey, I, my battery's running out. I'm at nine percent. Now, may I say something? Yes. About the carry cart, uh, it's it's four items in one. You can see it's a it's a dolly, a trolley, a hand truck, and a ladder. And if you go to carrycart.com, ladies, I've created a coupon that all your viewers and listeners can save fifty dollars. Still get free shipping and handling. This is the best deal in the country. Oh. Use c- coupon code Rose and Shamara. What? Yeah, use Rose and Shamara. <laughs> save fifty dollars <laughs> on the coupon code. Okay, so um, three words: Rose and Shamara. I love it. <laughs> but if you're, you know, people move eleven times a year. They move eleven times in their lifetime. You're moving in and out of dorms. You're moving in and out of apartments, condos. Whether you live on the beach or you live out in Texas, and you got a lot of land, you could use this yeah. to replace a wheelbarrow, a dolly, a trolley, and a. No, I love it. The one and all. It's perfect. I love it. That, that was me pushing a car. I put four of them under a car, and I pushed the car. Wait, what? Go, <laughs> we go, need to go. find one of these video commercials, Rose. Yeah, go down one. Go down one. One more. There we go. Hit the hit the button, and then you'll see me push the car. I think we put the same a shirt. twenty-four hundred pound car on four carry carts. <laughs> if it can handle this workload, it can certainly do any job that you've got in store for it. Look at this! Ha! I'm rolling the car. It's crazy. <laughs> that was nuts. That's pretty cool. I <laughs> know. So how much how much pounds or tons or whatever can it hold really? Oh, uh, I, I, yeah, I conservatively say four hundred, but that was six hundred pounds a tire for that. That car weighs twenty four hundred pounds. So I've got wow. uh, I usually demonstrate it with home shopping with about five hundred pounds of cement down there. Yeah, let's let's talk about the current situation right now. I think yeah. because of in the current time that we are in, um, with this whole the whole COVID thing. I think it's changed the whole concept of. Um, it seems like everybody is trying to go online or now rediscovering. Do you think it has brought up, um, brought more people in trying to get now onto these types of shows and platforms? You know, because be- things have become so virtual now. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Uh, uh, business for HSN and QBC has gone up significantly because folk, more folks are home. And I also found, I just was reading a letter from the president of Lowe's saying business is taking a huge jump. Well, look at that. Business is taking a huge <laughs> jump because people, the one few times that you do go out, you're going to go to those, those you know, at home stores and bring some stuff home and start improving the house while you're sitting around trying to avoid getting sick. You can, I think you can press that button. I don't think that button has any video or any audio. <laughs> So there's as a dolly, then it turns into a, a hand truck. Notice wow. you don't need, need any tools to go from, from position to position. Here we go. 
three, four, five hundred pounds of oh, cinder blocks. That's no so cool. Oh, there you go. Oh. oh, wow. I mean, to, and it's about takes up the space of a, of a push broom when you're storing it. So it's all in one for replaced it four things. Wow. In the garage. No, seriously. Wait, let me watch it again. Hold on. I know. I'm like, I need one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a dolly. So you're moving stuff in and out of the house, and it's oversized. Now it flips without using any tools. You just flip it into the hand truck, moving things in and out of the tight spaces, up and down stairs. Now you're unloading from Costco or Walmart or Home Depot, bags of mulch, bags of cement. Now everybody needs it. It's a safe, certified three-step step ladder and uh, stores in about the space of a push room. Wow. I that like it too. In the ladder mode, you can roll it around, so you don't have to drag it and pick it up. You can roll it around on the wheels. That is, that's really impressive. So is that something that you, but you can't get this in store, right? Those are my daughters. Um, this one's got um, you cannot get it at stores yet. I'm working on tractor supply and loads. And what's the cost for them now? One forty nine ninety five. But if you're listening now, use promo code Rose and Shamara. Save fifty dollars. I'll put it on the truck myself. Now that's a pretty handy tool. Okay, I'm excited to hear about any other inventions that you may be like working on, or maybe you can't tell us yet because someone might steal your idea. Well, <laughs> Do you have anything uh, that you're cooking up? I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about putting a. Uh, a, like a wheelbarrow dump on the back of that cart so you could drag it fill it up with dirt and then oh, dump yeah. on it, where it would snap on the frame i'm also thinking about at some point upgrading the wheels that they would be kind of oversized rubber wheels for you know crazy terrain but that's on the future i mean you've got a great cart here but there's a couple of uh you know improvements that i'm thinking about probably would be a couple of years before i get there but uh which is actually a great idea for people who do home yeah. improvement like ourselves because we have to go and right. get a freaking wheelbarrow yes yeah i mean think about it you put three bags of 50 pounds of cement in a wheelbarrow and all of a sudden you know you're having a hard time balancing it that's three bags i'm putting 500 to 600 pounds of cement you can press those buttons there's no audio you can put five to six hundred pounds of cement on a carry cart and it balances easily. Oh, those are my good looking legs. <laughs> There's my boy. That's your son? Yeah, that's my son. This is the model I hired for the day. She's very popular at HSN. So you're loading from Costco or Walmart. Bags of salt, not me. There you go. <laughs> wow, that's, I have to say that's really impressive. Yeah, thank you very much. I, yeah, I, I want to see this one too. I've been working on it for about five years. Wow. So, you know, it becomes one of those handy all-in-one type of things that you'll use, you know, 15 times a year. You're not using it every day, but to unload, move things around, quick little step ladder, and, uh, you know, I was, I'm very happy with how it came out. Very simple to operate, you know. So is this something that you designed yourself that you had to come up with the configuration design and then find the um the suppliers to help manufacture or so for someone how do you give them like navigating through that oh let me tell you, yeah. I, that's I, a good I, question I, I was just about to ask that <laughs> i this i approved an existing out of the original patent but that idea goes back to the 1800s i hmm. saw something similar about 20 years ago and i thought it was time to bring it back old gold right but I approved it. I made it heavy duty. I made it. I made it ANSI certified, kind of like a safety certification, so it doesn't tip while you're using it as a ladder. I improved the, you know, made the steel a little bit heavier, so it could take more of a pounding. And the question about sourcing is, I use. I use. Are you familiar with the, the website Alibaba? I've heard of it. Yeah. Alibaba is a great resource to see if what you're thinking about has already been manufactured, you know? So, you know, if you got a great idea, don't go get patents and whatever. Just go to Alibaba and see if they make it already or go to Amazon to see if they make it already. But if you want to get something made, like my buddy was talking about making something, I forget exactly what it was. And he was wondering, how do I get this thing sourced? Well, I said, well, first of all, try to make a crude prototype. Whatever your idea is, try to make a crude prototype 
get products that already exist and you know, tape them together so somebody can get an idea of what you're thinking about. And then go to a manufacturer in, on Alibaba.com that makes something similar. Like I located a guy that made, made carts, made shopping carts. Well, if you make a shopping cart, you could probably make a, a carry cart. I didn't, you know, so I, I, I wanted to use, because he's familiar with metal, he's familiar, he's got suppliers, he's, you know, he's buying wheels. So I used that guy. He never made a carry cart before, but I sent him a sample of what my idea was, and then he was able to construct it, and we moved forward from that point. So what do you say to those people that are, you know, have this great idea, but they keep getting like, no, <laughs> they keep getting, no, no one's going to buy it. No one's going to buy it. Well, and then they have... <laughs> The, the, beauty of the, 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 the beauty of it is, is now you've got a lot of, you know, a lot of the doors, who, who cares? Who cares if, 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 if uh, you know, if CVS doesn't take your item? You've got Amazon and you've got Facebook. You've got your own web page. So if you can cobble together a little ad, you can go on Amazon or Facebook for not a lot of money if you've got an item. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you get a little bit of personality, put that camera on you and sell your stuff. Put a five dollar ad on Facebook and you know see if you can drive some sales. You know, it's maybe commit. I'm going to commit two hundred dollars for the ads on Facebook, or I'm going to run an ad on Amazon see if I can drive some sales. You don't have to get yes from anybody else anymore. You can really do it yourself because of those platforms. I bet it's I nice. It. It's nice to go to a big one. Oh, I'm at five percent, ladies. I apologize. <laughs> So it looks like we're going to have to wrap up early, Rose. Well, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you know when I'm at one, and then we'll, I'll, say, I'll say goodbye. So, I, so I, do, I do have a final question is, sure. once you can get a product on one of those platforms, because sometimes I see, like Ms. Rahi, the same people come back and back. So if you get on there that one time, does it kind of secure you every time when you get a product, say, hey, I have something new? Or is it kind of going through the whole process all over again to see the new product, the steps, if we want to sell it? Well, HSN, it's always path of least resistance. If they've got Tony Little as, an, as a person or Joy Mangano way back when, you know, they started funneling products through Joy. So Joy, you know, she invented three or four things, but then a lot of things were, were, were you know, were found, found for Kind of like, a, like a, a musical artist. You know, she may bring her first song as something that she's written, but then other people start writing for her. And so that person, can, right. you know, it's not always the same thing. Um, yeah, if you're successful, it's going to snowball in and they're going to want to do more business with you. You bring in different products. You're going to get their ear. So, of course, it, you know, it's best. It, it's a good place to be. And so you will see the same person. They want fresh, but if you're going to be the same person, you better be updating the product you're bringing or bringing in new products. Can I, may I, may I tell everybody how to contact me if they have a question? Of or course. Something? That's what we're going to ask you next. And we so actually have you right at the bottom. I don't know if you see it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love, I really appreciate that. But if they want to ask me a question or they, you know, or they need representation, I'm not a rep, but I can direct them to a rep that gets you on QVC or HSN. Tom Wise, W-I-S-E, at carrycart.com. They could call me, you know, text me or, or email me there. and I'd be happy to help anybody with anything. Well, we are going to close out our Saturday show, Shamara. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much again, Tom, for being on our show. Thank you for sharing all the great information about your past and how to get onto QVC and HSN and the fact that you can put as seen on TV and anything. So, Rose, we need to come up with a product really We're quick. We're going to do an on TV background for our... Uh... Right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, thank you so much again for being a great guest on our show and uh, we appreciate you and uh, give them one more time how to reach out to you and then we'll close the show from there. Sure. Tom Wise, W-I-S-E at Kerry Cart, K-E-R-R-Y-K-A-R-T.com. It's kind of spelled funny or Kerry Cart.com, K-E-R-R-Y-K-A-R-T. And there's, I'm sure there's a link to send me a message or there's even a phone number there. It could be there. But don't forget the coupon code, Rose. Yeah, Rose and Chamara. It's spelled three words, Rose and Shamara, and say 50 bucks. It's a, that's the best deal in town. You can't buy it for better than that anywhere else on HSN or Lowe's or anywhere else. That's the best deal in town, and we're still doing free shipping in hand. I'm taking a beating, but we want to say thanks for having me on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you have a great rest of your Saturday.
Thanks, thanks Laura. Thanks, folks. Thanks for everybody who was listening on one of our favorite podcasts and for all of you that I see that are watching actually on YouTube. There's quite a few of you on YouTube, so we appreciate you guys watching the live. Have a great weekend, everybody, and we will see you next Saturday. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.